since it's all digital, I just assume I'm awesome and let it go. It's true. <laughs> you assume because you're correct. So yeah, I think awesome. it would be lovely if we could kick off the evening with a tune before we launch into the interview part. And for those of you having a little bit of trouble seeing, because of the way I have to record this, whenever Sarah's you know, speaking or playing, she will be on the Jumbotron. So, <laughs> um, you know, you can see her in all her glory. So, without further ado, welcome, Sarah. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Bandy, and I am going to play the first song that I ever wrote. And, um, I'm playing this one first because I think it's really important to realize that everyone has the personal power to play or do anything that they want to do. And the first time I picked up a ukulele, um, I realized that it was something really important to me. So I encourage everyone to try an instrument, even if they feel nervous about it. Okay. It's called Honeysuckle Rose. <laughs> Charleston, South Carolina, and I've lived there since I was six. Um, the Low Country is a really beautiful place, and there are a lot of people doing amazing things. Um, and I started playing music when I wa when I was like maybe four or five years ago, so pretty recently. Um, and it has become a huge outlet, creative outlet for me, and a means for. Um, I think it can be a means for social change because you can use music to empower yourself and make yourself feel um, great and help others feel great also. Um, and when other people pick up an instrument, um, they can use it as a tool also. 
So why don't you just launch right in and tell us what is Girls Rock Charleston? Okay. Uh, the description and maybe the mission, mm -hmm. and give us a picture of that so when we get into a little bit more, people have a good groundwork. Okay. Um, it's going to be a lot more easy to talk about than me because <laughs> um, I'm really excited about it. So Girls Rock Charleston um, is a, basically it's, uh, an organization where we use music education as a tool for empowerment for young women and trans youth in the low county area, um, which is Charleston. And we serve people ages 9 through 17. And we have a summer camp. Um, we've had two summer camps so far. We have a nonprofit status. And this year we're going to have, for the first time, um, after school program which is really exciting. And basically, okay, I'll read the mission statement. Maybe you can get what's going on here. Okay. Girls Rock Charleston empowers girls and transgender youth through music education, DIY media, and creative collaboration. And I'm going to read the vision, too, because that kind of says everything. Um, we envision a Charleston in which girls and trans youth trust and support each other, create the images that represent them, recognize the power and pleasure of their own creativity, use music as a powerful way to communicate and exchange ideas, are encouraged to value collaboration and community over competition, have full control over their own bodies, sexualities, and reproductive health, are safe and encouraged to explore their identities, are able to bring every part of themselves into every moment and are continually affirmed in their wholeness, are valued in a collective community dialogue about what a safe community would look like for everyone. Um, and it is a music education camp, um, but it is also it's a kind of a secret veil for actually making uh, little people feel awesome about themselves. <laughs> because I know when I was in fifth grade, I mean, I can't even... I was, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't trust myself. I felt like I was a crazy freakazoid monster and nothing I did was ever right. And, you know, bullies got to me and all these things happened. And I, I feel like it's really my job to, after living through this whole thing and realizing everything's going to be fine, it's my job and our job to show that it's going to be okay. And music is the tool that we use to do that. I, I love that. When I teach, I get so excited because you never miss the chance to warp young minds. <laughs> yeah. And, and to, it's to true. Lift them up because most of the messages we get are not exactly true. So it's incumbent upon us to kind of know how the world works to be able to communicate that and engage with younger people. But um, how did you come to be one of the founders and place Charleston in the context of the world? Okay, so um, the Girls, Girls Rock Camp Alliance is an international organization. There are different Girls Rock Camps all around the world. There are ones in Sweden, and there's one in Brazil, and one in Iceland, and there's a lot over the 48 states. Um, the first Girls Rock Camp started in Portland, Oregon, and like maybe tw 12 or 13 years ago by Carrie Brownstein, who was in Slater Kinney. She's really awesome. Um, and basically I've heard about it. I went to my first one. I volunteered in Nashville, Tennessee, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, um, Southern Girls Rock and Roll Camp, and I went there and volunteered for a week, and when I got there, I'd never played an instrument, and I was, like, helping my friend Jody, who was a drum teacher, and I walked in, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, a magical, crazy wonderland of magic. I was, like, walking up the stairs one day, like, giving, because I was her drum assistant, because I didn't, like, know anything, and I was, like, holding all these drumsticks, and I was walking down the hallway, and I looked through a classroom, because it was in the old MTSU campus, and I looked through a classroom, and there were 15 nine-year-olds learning I Want to Be Your Dog by the Stooges, <laughs> and I was just like, frick it, frick it, what? <laughs> that could not be real life right now. I just was like, I just, like, held my drumsticks and stared at them for a good 10 minutes, and they were like, you know, it was amazing. Um, so then from that moment on, I was like, okay, I finally found my people. Like, anyone that's going to do that is really amazing. And um, so I volunteered in Nashville, and then the next year I went to 
San Francisco and volunteered in the Oakland Girls Rock Camp. Um, and then I went to Austin and volunteered at the Austin Rock Camp. And more and more, I was learning how um, <laughs> I was learning how different rock camps use. Um, they're all independently run, so everyone makes their own rules, makes their own everything, um, daily schedule, how the day runs. But seeing the different threads that were successful and seeing the ways that um, they got great results and helped the campers feel empowered. And at, th at the end of the week, there's a concert. So the campers write a song with their band during the week, and then at the end they perform. So just seeing the different ways that the performance happened and the different ways that um, different workshops went was really inspiring. I took a lot of notes. And um, luckily, there are some amazing people in Charleston. There's, I mean, I did not at all do this alone at all. There are five other people that started it with me. And Kim Larson went to a couple other camps, too. And she's really amazing. She's the one that got basically got us our um, nonprofit status because I can't do paperwork, and she's magical. Um, so we all just got together and um, made a lot of plans, worked really, really hard, messed up a lot, had a lot of fundraisers, did a lot of community information stuff. Um, basically, we just really wanted to do it. I mean, took a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I also live in Charleston, which is um, kind of liberal, but also there's a lot of Old South uh, stuff to work through. So having like a radical kids camp isn't necessarily like everyone's number one cup of tea. So we just kind of had to figure out what what worked best and yeah. Yeah, well, it's good work because Charleston is not the hotbed of the progressive movement in the South. So <laughs> good for you for, for being part of that. Everybody part worked of that. so hard. All the people I work with are really amazing. Um, why don't you describe a few of the typical programs and events? Of yeah. The Girls Rock Charleston. And if you guys want to check it out later, it's girlsrockcharleston.org. Yeah, yeah. So for summer camp, the past two years, I was the, we all did everything, but um, I functioned mostly as the volunteer coordinator. So we had, the first year we had 38 campers, I think, and then we had like maybe 38, 39 volunteers. We had a lot of volunteers the first year, and <laughs> everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Like, we have to be a part of this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you do. And then the next year, our, our camp doubled, which was really great. And... Um, Oh, something that's important about it is that there are full and partial scholarships available. So we want every kid that wants to come to camp to be able to come. Um, so we do a lot of fundraising for that to make sure all kids can attend that want to. Um, yeah, so a typical day at camp. I was also the uh, assembly leader. This might come as a surprise, but I'm kind of like wacky in the morning sometimes. And um, <laughs> so the kids would get there and then it would be like Monday morning, first day, and they're like, you know, they're like 10 and they're like, oh my gosh, like, they're used to being concerned about the things like, did I wear the right tights today? Like, who's going to think this about me? And, you know, we also think those things in our adult lives. But just being able to try to diffuse that, um, I was the assembly leader and we had punk rock aerobics. That's where we start our day every day. Basically, I'm just going to get up and do one. Can I do that? Okay. So what you do is you... <laughs> so basically, punk rock aerobics, um, there are a lot of different moves, no big deal. You just kind of do like a... This is the vocal lunge, kind of just like burn up a little bit. You know, when, when there's like a gymnasium full of like 10-year-olds that are like, you're kidding, right? You got to be like, okay, I know you want to do this. Like, I know you feel weird. It's about to get real. And then there's like the do 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 There's the drummer. There's like the keyboard slide. Um, the windmill, you know. Anyway, so punk rock aerobics is really fun. Thanks. Anyway, so, and then there's assembly. And then um, first thing is music instruction. So the kids all pick an instrument. Um, the campers all pick an instrument and... We had vocals the first year, but the second year we didn't have vocals anymore. Um, and there's music instruction, so there's volunteers from the community that teach bass, guitar, keys, and drums. But I have a question. Do yeah. they just pick whatever appeals to them? They do. Some people have like a little bit of, um, some campers have a little bit of experience, but most campers have never played an instrument before. It's really awesome. And we get all our instruments donated. Um, 
from the community. We borrow a lot from a lot of places, um, which is kind of a hodgepodge of musical magic. So we have uh, music instruction and then the first workshop, and then I'll explain the workshops in a second, and then lunch, which during lunch, my favorite thing was uh, we get to have lunchtime bands. So there's a touring band that plays at lunch during lunch in the gym, and it's really awesome because it's so it's just like so bonding and amazing to be able to share a band that I really love with these campers that um, wouldn't have access to it. Um, you know, and uh, my band got to play one day at lunch, which was like literally the best thing that's ever happened to me. Because <laughs> they're like all in this semicircle like this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> adorable. But all the touring bands are really amazing, and just we try to have a different kind of music every day. And then another workshop after lunch, and then band practice, and then afternoon assembly. So the workshops, I'm going to tell you the ones that we've done in the past two years. We're always looking for a new thing. Um, music history. So basically, you know, we do try to make it fun, like scavenger hunts about, like, Dolly Parton fun facts that you can find around campus and stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, zine making, where all the campers make their own zine, which is really important to help campers feel like they can have access to their media and create media that represents them instead of just ingesting media that they're given that doesn't necessarily represent them. Um, body confidence, which is we do on the last day before the performance, and that's just kind of like, do you? Um, <laughs> Non-traditional instruments is really awesome. Um, we have like, there's one room just full of like crazy broken violins and theremins and record players and seashells and like just the craziest things, pots and pans and we just like let them run wild and like the, the sounds they create are amazing and we have, they had recording going on so we have a recording of it. Um, self-defense, Jenna Lyles teaches self-defense and she is incredible. We get those like punching things and um, I don't know what they're called, but <laughs> uh, bags, maybe. Uh, you know, self-defense is a really important and empowering thing to learn um, as a kid, and also every time I do it, I feel way better. Uh, songwriting, DIY merch and screen printing. So the first day, or during the week, they, the band is made randomly. We make the bands for them. There's five, usually, people in each band. Um, they make their own logo, and then they screen print T-shirts of their logo, and we had a button maker the first year. They made buttons. Um, so they make their own merch of their own band, which, like, I mean, kids love a button maker. I mean, I love a button maker. Like, like cut out a picture of a waffle, put it on a button. Like, I always want to be doing that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's really fun. Yeah. Those are all the workshops. And um, something that's great about the Girls Rock Camp Alliance, which we're affiliated with, is they have a conference every year. I'm kind of switching gears here. They have a conference every year where all the leaders of all the camps come to a central location and share information and dance to Robin and <laughs> do everything, um, talk about ideas, and it's really incredible. And we got a lot of our um, workshop ideas from the GC GRCA and different camps that we'd all worked at. So workshops are a really important part because music education is important because then they can, you know, hold their base that's usually bigger than them and play it. Um, but also the workshops are where they really uh, blossom and learn how to trust themselves. And, and so what we have coming up now is a little video from Girl Rock Charleston. And I don't know how many of you guys have seen the actual rock school documentary, not the Jack Black movie, which I think is a great movie, <laughs> but the rock school documentary. When I saw this clip, it made me think of that huh. only for a very specific group. It had that same, same vibe. So awesome. Can I, can we just say one thing? Yeah. So this video is, um, we had an Indiegogo campaign. Well, I, I had, I was sort of like back at this point in time, but they made an Indiegogo campaign um, to fund the after school program. And they asked me and my best friend Anna Freeman to be in it. So at the end of the week at camp, there's this, oh, we have skits during camp too. There's a lot going on. <laughs> skits are really fun too. Um, skits are where we take problems where, you know, um, campers are playing over each other in practice. And we take that and we make a skit out of it and do it at assembly. So it's like out in the open and people don't feel like it's only happening to their band. But at the very last day, there's a skit called Slime Records. And slimy record executives try to break up the band <laughs> And um, it's the favorite skit. It's the favorite skit of the week. 
for me. Um, they try to break up the band and sign them and like change the image and they're like, we want you to be famous but only if you're this way and the campers are like, no way! You know, <laughs> it's awesome. But anyway, so we decided to fund our after school program. Um, Beck, who's really amazing, thought that we should have a Slime Records uh, like kind of replay. Um, so this is basically the Slime Records skit in video form. And we got funded, so we're having an after school program. <laughs> Are amazing. These girls are good. Where are they from again? Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, yeah. South Carolina. Who They're knew? Really who knew such talent lived in the Low Country? You not know? me. Not me. Not this guy. You know, I think they'd be perfect for Slime Records. <laughs> Maybe just those three. Those two. That one's missing the look. Mm -hmm. We are gonna make millions. We're gonna make a lot of money. I'm ready to talk to this bitch. We're, we're gonna sign. We're gonna sign up. Some baby goils. We're gonna sign up the Slime Records tonight. Mm. We're gonna make a sale. Big bonuses for us, am I right? Oh, yeah, am that's I what right? it's all about. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. How am I doing? Give yep. me, give me yep. nice and greasy stuff. Your mustache is waxed to kingdom come. Yeah, and I ate a burger for lunch. Extra nice. oil never hurt nobody. Nice job, nice job. We're gonna make a sale tonight. Goyles, your future's calling. Pick mm -hmm. it up. Ring, ring. Oh my gosh, it's Slime Records. I'm putting on speakerphone. Hello. How's it going? Are you the band, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my favorite wolf gang, purple unicorn that uh, rhymes with car? You are. Great. Very good. Very good. Well, we are with Slime Records. You may have heard of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do you girls, uh, you have any hit songs? That's a good one. Yeah. Any hit songs? Any top number ones in the charts? We don't have any hit songs. How many shows have you played? Oh, ah, right. Girls Rock Camp Finale. That sounds yeah. impressive. Yeah, not bad. Impressive. Yeah, well, we are very excited about your interest, but we have a few uh, technical details to discuss with you ladies. Um, first of all, uh, you three, you three, uh, you are beautiful. But our concept is we don't want to see you anymore. Yeah, we're going to need you to turn around, face the back, cinnamon. Cinnamon's the star. Cinnamon's the star. Mm -hmm. We are gonna recommend an all ice cube diet. Yes, you're only gonna be allowed to eat ice cubes Delicious. if you're in a Yeah, uh, that's not gonna happen. Say what? I don't think that y'all changing the whole style is not gonna work. Yeah, that's not gonna work yeah. for us because we are one band and we work together. And if we're separated like that, that's like totally not gonna work. What are you gonna do if, if you're not on Slime Records? What are you gonna do? Go to Girls Rock. Oh yeah, Girls Rock is... Awesome. Especially their new after school thing if that goes on. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, that is yeah. gonna be awesome. You must come. The summer you can't stay amazing. with Slime Records. They're just gonna ruin your life forever. Girls? What is so fantastic and sparkly about Girls Rock Camp? You tell me that. We're waiting. Hmm? Hmm? Girls? 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 Oh no, we Are you in the there? My, My favorite wolf game, game, purple unicorn that rhymes with car. Woo! Hello. I am Dr. Mariana Trench, and this is Dr. Pangea, and we are the mad scientists of Girls Rock Camp. Through much research, we have found out what the girls in the low country need to be the most empowered rock stars in the world. We have dissected many young rock star brains. No, we have not <laughs> dissected any rock star brains. The rock star brains are fully intact. We have to make $5,000 or we get none of the money at all. None of the money at all. But Dr. Trench, what if we raise $3,000? If we raise $3,000, we will have no dollars at all. The girls need the after school program to have a safe place to express themselves and work together to make beautiful music for the low country. Girls rock. Girls rock! Girls rock! Girls rock program after school rocks! It's the best thing that will ever happen to your life! Woo! Yeah. It's the 
best thing that will ever happen to your life. <laughs> basically. I've been wondering what the best thing. Found it, yeah. Anyway, so there's a lot of uh, crazy DIY, last minute, awesome magic that happens when you do something like this. Well, clearly I can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> music is such an integral part of the GRC experience. And I think you touched on this, but were you a musician before you got involved with Girls Rock? No, um, I had never, I took violin lessons in third grade for like a year. Maybe like six months, but I was not I was not feeling it because um, it was like school, you know. I think music education is framed a lot like school sometimes, and um, it's got to be fun or you're not going to want to do it in general. Um, but no, I hadn't really been a musician at all. Um, when I went to the Nashville camp, that's the first time I was like, oh my gosh, like I I played the drums. Like Jody taught me how to play the drums, and I was just like, oh, I'm a beast. This is so awesome. And um, of course, I was really bad, but um, it was really like a jumping off point to feel like I could, if these kids can do it, I can definitely do it also, you know. So you went from not being a musician to getting involved with Girl and Rock to making your first album. Mm -hmm. So why don't you play us another song from the Honeysuckle Road? Okay. And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about how that all happened. Okay. Um, this song I wrote for a compilation about gender and violence, um, and it's about how we're all the same, even if we look different on the outside. It's called Animal Skin. You guys, I played it at open mic, so maybe you heard it. is I just realized that um, I've always made stuff, but I, I realized that expressing myself through music and playing an instrument was a really, uh, I just feel like it makes me feel so good and so clean and like I can understand a lot of the complicated things around me when I digest them and kind of recycle them through songwriting and um, no one's ever asked me that question before. It's so wonderful. I love playing music so much. and. It really makes you trust yourself, too, because I, I you know, everyone has self-esteem issues because we're alive um, <laughs> and breathing in and out in this world, and it's kind of designed to make you feel bad a lot of the time, um, in my opinion, and uh, it just was a way for me to understand myself and the way that I felt about things. Whenever I get upset, I write a song. Sometimes when I'm happy, I write a song, and it's just really uh, a big release for me, and... 
for recording my album, I borrowed this like super gnarly Tascam uh, four track, which is like a tape. You put a tape in there and then you press all these different buttons it's from like the 80s. Um, and someone had this really sweet uh, delay pedal they let me borrow and I like put a mic, I hung it from my fan <laughs> on a string and I was like singing into it. I just like, it was totally like I had three things that I had borrowed from people and just like holed up in my room and hung out and um, made some really weird sounds and <laughs> some things that I liked, some things I hated and I figured out how to layer them and it's really, recording is really empowering too. Um, at, at Girls Rock Camp we have, uh, we're trying to work in a workshop about recording on your computer because it's really easy these days. Um, we also have a band camp of all the final performances of the campers. So yeah, just figuring out how to record yourself and I mean it's, it's like writing in a book and it's there forever but it's really fun to feel power of these machines that are usually really overwhelming to me. Um, and use them to make music that represents me. It was really awesome and complicated and really fun. And so, so how has that fed back into the work at Girls Rock? Um, I guess you're coming at it from a different place than when you began. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I well, I know now that it's like so important to my personal story to have music in my life. So, um, making it available to a diverse group of people that wouldn't necessarily have access to it is really important to me and I feel really passionate about it. I think also recording your own album and I released it on cassette tape which means I hand dubbed everyone. Um, I made 50. There aren't any more. I don't know where they are. They're all around. Um, but yeah like facing the challenges of that and being really patient and like seeing a goal that you really want and working really hard even though it's like who's gonna who really wants me to you know like who am I doing this for and just keeping going even though it gets tough. Um, I think taught me a lot about just being resilient and working with my collaborators to make Rock Camp happen the past two years. Um, what kind of programs does Girls Rock have coming up in the near future? Or you want to maybe talk about the summer programming? Um, program? Yeah, well this summer we have camp. Um, I actually in the past like six months or so stepped back a little bit. I had a lot of crazy things going on. But so they planned the after school program and it got funded so it'll be happening I'm pretty sure next fall. But camp summer camp's happening this year. Oh my gosh, it's the best. Summer camp is so great. Girls Rock Camp is so fun. Um but we have camp July eighth through thirteenth, I think. I wrote it down. Um camp, July eighth through thirteenth. Um, yeah. So we have camp this year and going to be awesome. Um, are you involved in any other community building or activist activities around the Charleston area? Um, well, I did Food Not Bombs for a while, which was really awesome. Um, I'm a art librarian and uh, we donate some of our old books to different libraries. I really want to have in my dreams, uh, I have a little free library set up outside the art library where we can put our books and people can come and it can be a community space where people can meet up and grab information that um, we are giving away. But I haven't made that happen yet. There's more things that, um, yeah, I want to be involved in everything. It's always good to have a project. And speaking of projects, your new one is your album you're working on, so you feel like playing us a song and introducing that? Sure. Yeah, um, I haven't actually recorded any of it yet. I don't even know where that crazy box went that I put my old one on, but it's somewhere. Um, and yeah, I think this this record will probably be a little more complicated because I have played my instrument longer and um, yeah. This song is called, I don't know, yeah, um, I don't know what, how I'm going to do it yet. I, I'm also in this band, a uh, Hawaiian band called Olu Olu, and the lap steel player, like, wah, 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 that thing, um, <laughs> <laughs> he has a recording studio, so he said he might help me out. He's got, like, legit, beautiful recording studio, so maybe I can weasel my way in there for a couple tracks. 
but I think it'll mostly be just me in my room being weird. Um, and this song's called Warrior Sisters, and I wrote it actually after the first camp session ended, after the first performance um, of the campers. It was really awesome, and about how I was feeling, like I didn't really know what to do next, and about how sisters were there. Yeah. Anyway, Warrior Sisters. <laughs> Spiel <laughs> on occasion. I have like a little kids one. It's really fun. Um, yeah. What are your current influences and uh, interests as far as your music goes? Do you pull it out of thin air? Or uh, oh, like when I like write a song? Yeah. Or what do I like to listen to? Well, both. You know, like, so what kind of input are you getting and you know, to produce your, your songs and stuff? Um, Nina Simone is a huge inspiration for me. Uh, her, I mean, her civil rights work was really inspirational to me. And she wails, dude. And she's so amazing. Oh, my God. Um, I fall into the Nina Simone YouTube hole regularly. Um, she's incredible. She's an amazing piano player, amazing songwriter. Uh, I look up to her a lot. She's really brave. Um, and, yeah, I listen... I don't know. Um, yeah, Nina Simone, Joni Mitchell. I really love her too. She's you an. You have more than the passion for Neil Young. I do love Neil Young. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's totally awesome. I love his one note solos. Those are really actually. I mean, it sounds like I'm kidding, but those are really inspiring because if you can be like, and then it's like, yeah, Neil Young soloing right now. <laughs> like, I love that. Like, <laughs> if you can like really just feel it, even if you're playing one note, like that's another thing. I mean, it all connects to rock camp. Like, that's so amazing. If you teach a camper three chords, like, that's enough. You know, like you can write a song about three chords. Um, so Neil Young, Neil Young, ten year old girl. Same, it's all love. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I really love African music and gamelan music, and yeah. Um, what kind of message would you like to get out to your audience? Like when you're playing for a group like this, or for the people who are going to be watching this, or when you play in front of girls with your band, mm -hmm. what kind of message are you trying to get out to them? 
I think it's different for um, every audience. I think when I play with my band in a bar, you know, we just want to, like, make it, like, fast and fun and, like, people are just going to, like, dance and do their thing and live their life. Um, in, a, in, like, this kind of setting, I feel uh, comfortable to, like, play my kind of mellower jams, which is really where I really want to be doing. Um, and I think, you know, sad songs can be really therapeutic for the person who writes them, but hopefully they're really therapeutic for the people that are listening um, because it's like, you know, we've all been there and felt confused. and So hopefully it would be really dreamy if I was uh, connecting with the people that were listening and being like, hey, it's cool, we've all been there. And sometimes you can make art out of it and it feels better. Um, in my shows that I do, I always like the guests to challenge the audience and the listeners and the viewers and the chatters with a call to action. Mm -hmm. So what call to action would you offer up to people? I would say this week, make it a point to look around your community and see what is going on that you're interested in and um, email them, call them, and do try to volunteer for one event or go to one event. I also would say um, if you've ever thought about ever playing an instrument, um, even if you're like, oh, I can't do that, or I'm, I'm past my prime, or I'll never be good at that, or um, you really, really think you should pick up an instrument, you can use either of mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Uh, and, you know, ukuleles are like 40, 50 bucks, and I can figure out how to get you one if you want. Uh, yeah, I think just even just like trusting yourself enough to pick up an instrument, and even if it doesn't sound the way you want to, just letting yourself make a weird, freaky ghost song about weird stuff, I'm like feeling good about it. Because you can. Everyone can do it. You just got to want to. Well, thank you for being such a great example and so Aww. encouraging to everybody. And for taking the time out tonight to come down here and do a show with us. Thanks and so much. It was really fun. Uh, we yeah. really appreciate it. You know, Green Plum Laboratory is kind of a new venture. So we're trying to build it up. And it's great to have people in here and have events and have guests like Sarah. So you want to take us out with a tune to wrap the evening up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I play two? You can play two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, this song is an example of how you can write, uh, I haven't recorded this one, but how you can write a song with just two or three chords and say what you want to say. It's called No Mistakes. So maybe we should talk about something. Or something. Anyone wanna oh, you got a
haven't listened to her, actually. Oh, I totally have this clip I'll play like, when we're done here. Uh, yeah. It's like my, my favorite ukulele piece ever. It's uh, Amanda Palmer, who used to be one of the guys in the balls. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a hardcore crash punker, and she has a ukulele song. It's awesome. That's so, awesome. I feel like uh, the ukulele has made a crazy comeback in this way. I think a lot of people... Um, are you using it because it's really portable? Like, every time I go... Well, it's accessible. It's, it's not terribly expensive. I mean, I have one for mm -hmm. that reason. It's got four strings so you can you know, make some noise, but it's not... Totally. It's not, it's not scary. Yeah. Um, also, every time I go anywhere in the airport, I always take it with me. Because it's really... It's totally fun. So, I'll cue up Amanda Palmer when, when we grab cool. this just for a bit. Okay, so this um, I just learned, so I'm going to have that just in case. Uh, it's um, a song, an African song about the moon, so I figured it would be a good, like, good night song. Um, and it's just about the power of the moon and the power of nature. Um, and there's a part that you guys can sing if you want. Uh, it's the second part. It says, Ula Wale O. Can you say that? Ula Wale O. You got it. Cool.